Congratulations on your new rental. Now, as you know, with your rental, if you got a violin, viola, cello, or bass, you should have received a free music stand from the Baroque Violin Shop. And what I'm gonna to do today is show you how to set it up. This music stand will be kept at your house just for you in your practice time. So, the music stand comes in a bag. All you need to do is unzip it and pull it out. And you will notice that there are several different knobs for adjusting the height of the stand. The first thing to do is you want to go ahead and get the bottom part established. So loosen your little screw and just gently pull on the foot in my little table here. It's not very wide. And then you just tighten it and then you have the base of the stand. For the top part, you also have what we call kind of the head of the stand and you'll just open it up gently and you'll notice that there are these bizarre antennas here. This is actually uh, used to hold the music. So you can just kind of keep those down at the bottom for now. This is just not important. And this screw here, you will tighten it. And voila, you've got the, the head established. Now, of course, you're not this short. So for a violin or viola player or bass, you're gonna need to extend it up. There's a knob here. And then there is another knob that goes even higher. So voila, that is how you set up your music stand. Now that you know how to set up your at home stand, let's talk about the stand you're gonna use in class. So we'll set this to the side. Now the uh, Emanuel School of Music will be providing these stands at your own school and they will be kept on location. Um, these stands are a little bit easier than your at home stand. Um, there are two parts. Um, this part here is the same looking head that was on your black stand and you'll notice that on the back there's a little part right here, a little sleeve that we're going to use in a second. So you can just keep this open and set it to the side. And then the bottom part, same idea, but these flip down. So you're going to take the foot and you just pull it down. And there's a little clip right here. So when you pull, it latches. Did you hear that? It clicks. Now my table is still a little skinny here. We'll make it work. And up here, there's a little arm. So on your stand, we're going to put this little sleeve and it just slides down easily on that arm. And then before you know it, you have a silver music stand. Have fun in class. Now let's learn about all the parts of your new instrument. The top part here, this little whirling part, is called the scroll and every instrument has one. Now we have what we call like our little ears. These are the pegs. And the pegs live in this rectangle part, and that's called the peg box. Down from the peg box, we have the long part, and every instrument has this. This is called the neck. And on the other side of the neck, is this long black piece of wood and this we refer to as the fingerboard because that is where your fingers go. Down from the neck and the fingerboard we have the shoulders and this is real complicated make sure you pay attention. This is the back. 
And this is what we call the front. See how smart you are already? Now down from here, the sides we call the ribs. So moving all the way down the instrument are your ribs. On the front of your instrument, you have these cutouts. And these cutouts are called the F holes. If you look at this one, it looks like a fancy F, but on the other side, it's a mirror image. Down from your fingerboard, we have the most fragile part of the instrument. This is what we call the bridge. So this part is not glued onto your instrument. It is simply balanced on the top. So you want to be very gentle and graceful around this part of your instrument. As we move further down, this is also called the tailpiece and every instrument has it. The violin, the viola, and the cello have these little tuners and these are called fine tuners. And just a reminder, don't let Uncle Bob tune, tune your instrument or turn these, so keep these safe. Violins and violas have this nice little patch right here. This is called a chin rest. And of course, that is how and where you put your chin. So that is your chin rest. And violins and violas have a very special thing, this little black part, it's called the button. So some teachers will say, put your button to your neck when you're setting yourself up. So that you'll need to know button. And from there, every instrument has this little piece right here. And that holds the whole instrument together. It's very important. And it's called a tail gut. And the reason it's called tail gut is it used to be made out of animal gut. But of course now it's either metal or plastic. These are the pieces for the violin and viola. There's a couple new things for the cello and the bass. Again, the cello and bass have all the normal parts. It has the shoulders, the ribs, your peg box. The bass does have different pegs and we call these mechanical pegs. And with the uh, cello or the bass, we have a special part at the end because we have to extend this to be able to play it. So I'm gonna put this down on the floor so you can see it. Remember, we always keep it on its side. So the cello and the bass, this is called an end pen. So in your class, you're going to learn how far to extend the end pin for your height. And this is an adjustable screw that can tighten your end pin. And the same thing as your violin or viola, you have your, your tail gut right here that holds the whole thing together. For your bow, there's not too many parts. The long part here is called the stick. And the top part here, this is a pretty fragile part. You want to make sure you don't knock it on anything. This is called the tip. And of course, the hair is made out of horse hair. The bottom part here is called the frog. And this part, I know it doesn't look too important. It's nice and silver, but it's called the silver ferrule. And you will need to know this because that's where you learn to put some of your fingers. So you have your frog, your silver ferrule, and the stick. The fancy part right here, we call the winding. It's winding, and the last part is your adjustable screw. So in class, when you're ready to use your bow, you can tighten it to a nice amount where you have just a little bit of firmness there. And then when you're done playing, you always loosen it. Usually it's about 10 to 15 turns. 
So when you pack your instruments up, it should always be loose just like that. I hope this is helpful for you. And again, have fun with your musical journey.